this is brother teacher I have another interesting question most of you in the martial arts world are familiar with the karate master George Dillman also world renowned for pressure point knockouts in fact he has uh, published authored many books on pressure point knockouts and he's done hundreds and hundreds of demonstrations uh, demonstrating the same I should say however George Dillman has been under great scrutiny over the past I say decade as it relates to the legitimacy of his pressure point knockouts more specifically if he can actually or any of his students for that matter can actually cause someone to pass out or knock them out in other words without touching them apparently it's been said by him over the years that he can through some uh, form of knowledge oriental I should say uh, just hold his hand in a certain area of the human body and cause unconsciousness well this has finally been disputed not just in recent days but this happened somewhere in the early 2000s where he actually had one of his students take on a challenger and that challenger was none other than the National Geographic yes Nat Geo someone did not believe that this could actually happen that it defied physics and science any science that's known by man that is was it true that he could actually just hold his hand in the position around a certain part of a human being's anatomy and that person would be rendered unconscious or was it just a parlor trick that was the question well this one representative of the National Geographic took on the task and took him to task and quite frankly one of George Dillman's students was the guinea pig in other words he was the person who was demonstrating on the non-believer that represented the in, not the inquirer but the National Geographic but much to his dismay it didn't work no he did not knock the individual out he tried intensely and it didn't work so in a later subsequent interview Master Dillman I still call him Master and I'll get to that in a moment he made the statement to the inquirer that there's a possibility the guy had his tongue at the roof of his mouth which would, would have rendered the knockout technique null and void or if the guy raised one of his big toes up and had the other one down or in the reverse either way he would not have been able to knock the guy out based on Chinese medicine and pressure point theory if you will but many people have taken this to be malarkey bullcrap him just throwing out some fluff if you will for lack of a better expression of word but let me say this first when I started the martial arts as a child I remember Grandmaster George Dillman I watched him grace many magazines martial arts that is black belt karate illustrated official karate and so forth he's been in dozens and dozens if not hundreds of magazines for his prowess in martial arts and he was a great competitor at one time in sports karate and he did numerous demonstrations he was even uh, a friend of former heavyweight boxer Muhammad Ali rest his soul but some say or would say that because of the things that he had done in the past and the celebrity that he had even gained more of in knowing Muhammad Ali and then meeting a master of Ruku a jiu-jitsu who studied pressure points 
and him learning some from him, he went on and created his own system of pressure point uh, fighting, as it were. But he got carried away. Now I'm sure you see where I'm heading with this. Was it just to make millions of dollars trying to convince the general public that you were able to knock people out without even touching them at one point? He was all physical. But let me fast forward and say this. I believe, I know for a fact that he did study Okinawan Karate. That I do know. And based on all of the years that he had been in the martial arts, I do accept him as being a master in Karate. I also do buy the fact that he did study Rukio Kempo or Jiu Jitsu and study pressure points. How far he got in that knowledge, I don't know. It's anyone's guess. But I will say this. If you are in a controlled environment and you have someone standing in front of you that is not resisting you and where there is no aggression and they're they are just your partner, your student, or your demonstrator, it's easy to apply pressure points as it is easy to apply any technique for that matter because you have a captive audience, so to speak. Does this translate in a street fight? When you have adrenaline flowing, two possible aggressive opponents, someone who's thinking and moving on their feet, can you get it off? We can talk about that maybe later. But take this into consideration. So there's a distinct difference is what I'm getting at. When you're standing in a controlled environment, demonstrating pressure points or anything else for that matter, versus the real streets where you have an alert and active opponent okay so make sure you write that on your thumb now myself personally I have pressure points inclusive in my system but as I forestated in an earlier video I don't believe that everything that you do in martial arts as far as some of the secrets and some of the most sensitive matter in martial arts as it relates to how to kill a person, certain pressure points that will cause certain things to happen to your opponent. I don't believe it should all be publicized. It should be kept with just that instructor. Because many, many years ago in ancient times when martial arts were being developed by various rules or schools, they only had one or two students that were actually close to the teacher because they did not want to take that thing that they treasured so dearly as far as the martial arts was concerned and just give it to the general public because you had to be found worthy. This is my belief today. Everyone can't be trusted with a loaded gun or any weapon for that matter. So why would you give, some, give someone or anyone the deep dark secrets of martial arts and there are some now of course there are going to be the naysayers there are going to be the scoffers there's going to be the doubters or the doubting times if you will and they're going to say oh this is not possible you can't do that it's, that's humanly impossible to do this or that that's only because they're on the outside looking in that's only trying to get you to reveal your hand so to speak but you don't have to divulge everything that you know as an instructor. Some things you'll possibly take to your grave with you because you find no one worthy enough to treasure those real gifts in the martial arts. Now getting back to Master Dillman, I believe that there's a possibility that there are some secrets that should be kept with the instructor and not revealed to the general public and I do believe that sometimes that people can get carried away and they can get uh, obsessed with money and wealth and they can bastardize the martial arts and that's possibly true with Master Dillman 
I wasn't a fly on the wall. I, has, I have not been privy to all of his uh, seminars and even a portion of them. All I know is what I have seen and I've studied of him over the years. And I can say that he is a credible martial artist. I can say that in general. And I can also say that he does know pressure points. But to what extent is the question? I personally, as I'm speaking, as of the airing or the presentation of this video, publication of it, that is, that I don't believe that every aspect of what he has done on camera is true. That's just me. I also will say this. I'm not beating up on this man. He's about 76 years old now. I'm not beating up on him, but I'm saying this, as I've said in time past. As we get older in the martial arts, people look at your personage. They look at your character. Now getting back to the personage part, I mean this. When the general public the average man, woman, or child are looking for a martial arts instructor. They're not looking for someone that's obese. That is not the image that they have in their mind. I see way too many martial arts masters or even just instructors in general who have let themselves go or who have never actually gotten to a point of good physical conditioning. Something is wrong with this picture. If you are selling yourself, you must remember this, if you're an instructor, you're selling yourself. Not just the system or the style that was passed on to you. You've got to represent it. And when people see you, you have to have the image of a martial artist. I'm not saying that you have to look like Charles Atlas or Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm not saying that. Or even Bruce Lee. But I am saying this. When your belly sits out in front of you when you sit down and you can't see your lap something is wrong and you can barely walk a block without being out of breath something is wrong notwithstanding if you have some existing health issue now with that said your health issue might be the result of you being way overweight now master Dillman is obese he shouldn't be obese you can't take some things that you learn, such as Aikido. I've seen a lot of heavyweight Aikido masters, and Steven Seagal is one. Love him to death. But I've seen a lot of obese Aikido masters because of the nature of their style. They don't train like they're supposed to. They don't watch their diets. So I just had to throw that footnote in here. Stay in shape. I don't care if you can touch a person with one finger and knock them out. You have to first be able to get to them. And if you can't move, or if you're out of breath in the first 30 seconds, how effective are you as a martial artist? And even a defender in general. So getting back to the original premise of this video, is George Dillman. Master Dillman, a fake. I'll say this. He is a karate master. He is a martial arts master that has studied pressure points. But some of what he has done, I do take issue with, and I don't believe at this present time that he can hold his hands around an individual's head or neck area and cause unconsciousness to that individual. That I don't believe. Not him. I'm not saying that it can't happen. I wouldn't divulge it to you if I believed it. Or specifically pointing out some things as it relates to ancient martial arts. That's not the topic. I don't believe that he can do it. And I don't believe that he could ever do it. I believe that his pressure point training only involved touching 
pressure points on the human body through physical contact. That's what I believe based on what I have seen and what I know of him. Now, if someone wants to call him a fake as far as the other part is concerned, him holding his hand up to an opponent and they just pass out, if he was able to do it, he couldn't get it off very well in the street fight because his opponent, nine times out of ten, is going to be mobile. And he has to be mobile on some level himself. But to be obese and not be able to move and to be out of shape doesn't make you a very effective martial artist, period. No matter how much you know or how much pressure point systems you have studied. This is Brother Teacher. What do you think? Is Master George Dillman a fake or not? Let me know in the comment section below. So long.